Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I know it's been a little while since I put out a video, but I'm still here, still alive, still making stuff. And today I'm going to show you my best-selling item I made last year during Christmas shows and everything. It starts out with a simple squared block hot glued to a faceplate. If you're a beginner, if you've only been turning for a few months, you can make this project. If you're an experienced turner, you can crank these out 15 to 30 minutes. Let me show you how. And what this is, is just a scrap piece of pecan that I actually put a little bit of stain on the top. You'll see why here in a minute. I'm also going to be mainly using carbide tools. For one, so I don't have to sit there and resharpen constantly. And for two, if you're a beginner and doing a project like this, you're probably using carbide tools. Great for entry level stuff. You'll probably see me stop. You'll probably see me stop often because I'm basically wanting to establish a rim or where I want the rim to be. So I'm going to stop look at it know i can take at least another pass and then eventually i'll find my rim all right so there's my rim so now that i've established exactly where my rim's going to be the rest is super simple and doesn't take long at all You blow out a chunk like that no big deal this is a rustic looking item it's, it don't stress that kind of stuff and again this is a cheap item we're not going to spend a ton of time making it great this isn't a 300 dollars bowl here all right i got this outside edge fairly flat you don't always have to have it flat you can put a bead detail i'll show you later some other ones i've done but this one i'm going to keep it nice and simple because the purple rim is going to be what kind of sets it apart if you don't have like a scraper like this square carbide uh, skew on its side, they can all do that. All right, most of the tool marks are out, sanding to take care of the rest. We're gonna move on, hollowing the sucker out. Also, if you wanna leave your tailstock up here till pretty much the last couple passes, you can do that. I just kinda have it out of the way for y'all right now. Did I mention this is a Rex Kruger style bowl? He, he taught me about these last year. Or he inspired a similar idea which led me to these. So I just got finished hollowing with the carbide and as you can see there's tear out. That is the big downfall carbide is you don't get a clean pass like you will with traditional tools. So you got a couple options here. If you only have your carbide tool it's time to start sanding get that out of there. If you're good with the bowl gouge and you can go ahead and hit that with a pass with the bowl gouge and you can probably move straight on to finishing. Or if you're not comfortable with the bowl gouge I highly suggest a bowl scraper because you can put a burr on it and it'll still have some tear out but it'll be a lot less than this let me show you. All right, so let's take a look at what the bowl scraper gave us. And that is a negative rake bowl scraper, by the way. And we just have a small area of tear out here now. And again, on the opposite side, a small area of tear out. Much, much better than just coming straight off the carbide. Again, if you had a bowl gouge and you can make a clean pass with a bowl gouge, go ahead and do it now. You don't even have to haul the whole thing out with the bowl gouge. Just make your final pass. That way you're not having to sharpen over and over again. Again. This is budget. You're looking for speed. To go along with that speed is how we're going to finish this. Y'all know I love my tongue wax, my tongue honey, but this is a budget-friendly project. But we're trying to hit a price point here, and in order to do that, we're going to put a cheaper finish on it, and that's going to be lacquer. The great thing about lacquer is I only need to sand to about 180 grit. Now, normally I go to 240, but at a minimum, you only have to sand to 180 because that lacquer will fill in a lot of scratches. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this right now. Then I'll show you what I'm going to do to get it off the lathe and get rid of some of this other stuff. Alright, so now that we're fully sanded slash planed, uh, you're going to come with a semi-sharp chisel. It could be really sharp. You just want to make sure you don't gouge into your wood back here. We're going to start 
loosening up all the little hot glue spots that we had now bigger pieces of wood sometimes i hot glue actually like on the inside i think this one i'm pretty sure i only put it on the outside you give me a little whack there she is off all right so take your chisel and get off what's what's remaining and then we'll probably sand this to 120 grit and i'll take you through the the finishing process all right now we're out in my spray booth and i'm gonna use the highest quality lacquer i can find actually no no this stuff kind of sucks but i found it makes no difference to use this cheaper lacquer for your first you know one or two coats followed up with a better higher quality lacquer this or depth i find works really well and then of course the sheen that's that's totally a personal preference so let's get this sucker spray so i'll let that sit there for about 15 20 minutes and come out and hit it with another coat but to make this video a little shorter a little quicker for me to make because i've got a lot of shit to do i'm going to show you the ones i've already completed all right so here we go a few that have already been done this one was lacquered this was the only one i actually used my new product tongue honey i'll tell you more about that in a different video it was actually walnut with a hickory top we got another pecan that was colored blue, Spanish cedar, another pecan, and another pecan. This one actually didn't even have a rim. I might put a little lid on it. But just to show you, they're very quick to make. I made all of these yesterday in about half a day, actually. And they will all sell for around $35 to $50, give or take. As you can see, you can get a little more fancy if you want to put some beads on the outside. If you want to drill some holes before you turn this, then you could have a cigar ashtray if you want to make a thicker rim or not even a rim. Maybe if this is bigger and had some pockets on the side, you got a cigar ashtray. There's a quite a variety of things you can do with this basic concept that won't increase your time that much. And the big key is to batch them out. Put all your brands on them at once, mark all your centers at once, and just you can crank them out real quick. Having these cheaper items, one, gives access to, you know, the average Joe that's got about $50 to spend on a Christmas present. Two, get you in their house because, of course, your brand's on the back. You're going to give them a business card and it starts a relationship, which in turn, number three, helps get your name out there so you can possibly do more work in the future and you can show them your better work so like i said super beginner friendly very easy there's nothing there's nothing real hard here and every single one of these i have about an hour's worth of work and that includes the finishing time now of course this isn't super impressive this isn't my best work and i doubt it'll get a lot of views on youtube but hopefully it helps out especially some beginners out there people looking just for products they can crank out quicker to fill their booth to draw in more people for the higher priced items as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe because I'm going to show you another couple products that I do that are super quick that seem to sell like hotcakes during the holidays.